good afternoon, everyone. Let me, uh, first of all, just thank you guys for joining us. And secondly, just apologize. We had to move the scheduling back a little bit. Marty and I were stuck on the flight. That wasn't very pleasant, but thankfully we made it. You know, normally when you have this many lawyers in the same room, something's gone wrong. <laughs> but today that is not the case. We're uh, certainly celebrating something that no one can object to. And it's an honor to be with you all in this important new chapter in the history of Georgia's judiciary. Before I begin, I just want to recognize both Judge Andrew Pinchin and Judge Ben Land, who have already had storied and impactful careers in the law benefiting our fellow Georgians. I also want to recognize their families and their colleagues who are here to support them today. A very impressive turnout. I'm also thankful for their many colleagues in the judiciary who are here with us today, including the justices of the Supreme Court. Certainly want to congratulate Chief Justice Boggs and presiding Justice Peterson in their new roles and uh, thank Justice, uh, former Chief Justice Namius for, for his service to our state and to our country. I also want to thank the members of the local judiciary that are here in the different circuits that these two individuals have participated with and certainly those from the Columbus area and I also want to just thank those that are serving us on the federal bench who have done just a great job not only representing our state but also our nation. I want to thank the members of the General Assembly that are here to celebrate these two great Georgians as well. You know, there's a, a lot of folks to name here, and I, I probably have not gotten all the names, but I did just want to acknowledge uh, the Dean of the House, Calvin Smyre, who's just been such a great leader in this chamber and will soon be serving our country. So, Calvin, if you're here, thank you for your leadership. I know I did see Chairman Richard Smith, who's been such a great friend to me and a great advocate for the Columbus area and also a great advocate for Judge Land along with uh, Vance Smith, and I haven't seen uh, Senator Robertson, but just a great local delegation. I know I'm missing some others that are here, but just thank you all for your work and your support on, beh on, on behalf of, of these two individuals, and we've heard so many folks reach out to us about them. This afternoon, we're also joined by many of those who have served as ex executive counselors to myself, Governor Deal and Governor Purdue, and I certainly want to welcome you all and thank you for the jobs that you have done in your careers and what you're currently doing. Today we're also joined by Judge Land's pastor, Dr. Shane Green, who's the senior minister at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Columbus, who is going to come forward and bring us an invocation today. So, Dr. Green. Good afternoon. If you would, please uh, bow your heads with me. Oh Lord our God, we give thanks for each and every day given to us and acknowledge our dependence upon you for the gift of our great nation and her principles and the values she represents we are indebted. For our leaders who appoint and shape our government and our society, we pray for wisdom and for courage. For our judicial process that safeguards and protects the rights of every citizen we ask your blessings. Lord, for those whose tasks are to preside and maintain order and fairness, may you uphold. Help all those who bear the label of judge to be faithful to their charge. Help them to, to, to be loyal to what exists in them, to disregard personal interests, to set aside popular opinion and ideology, and to make each judgment as fair as possible to fulfill with integrity and effectiveness the responsibilities given to them. O oh Lord, may you further the cause of justice, truth, and humanity so that it never suffers at their hands. Almighty God, for these before us today, we give thanks and ask your blessing. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Green, for those powerful words. You know, less than a year ago, we joined together in this chamber to swear in Judge Pinson to the Court of Appeals. And in the months since, he has distinguished himself further 
And I know that he will be a strong and wise voice on the highest court in our state. During his time at the University of Georgia, where he was an exceptional student, and his years in Washington, D.C., where he clerked for Justice Thomas, his outstanding career in the Attorney General's office as Solicitor General, where he helped lead and helped win, I might add, the Water Wars, or any other numerous achievements that Andrews had, he has always worked diligently on behalf of his fellow Georgians, bringing his intellect and skill to every case, every assignment, every interaction, and every test of his abilities. Throughout it all, he has proven himself again and again. It's my honor today to introduce our Attorney General, Chris Carr, to give the formal introduction of Andrew Pinson. General Carr. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Governor. It's an honor to be here to introduce Judge Pinson. So, Governor and First Lady Kemp, members of the Georgia Supreme Court, Court of Appeals and Courts of the State, Judge Land, congratulations to you, to your family, and to your friends as well. Members of the Federal Judiciary, members of the Georgia General Assembly, friends, family, and distinguished guests. It is truly an honor to be here once again. If my math is right, we gathered together less than a year ago, 324 days to be exact, in this very chamber, to celebrate the swearing in of Judge Andrew Pinson to Georgia's Court of Appeals. And what a joyous day it was. And today, I'm even more excited and more proud than I was then, as we come together once again to witness Judge Pinson's continued rise through the judicial branch, this time to Justice Pinson. Governor Kemp, let me start by saying that you could not have made a better appointment. I have said this to you before, Governor. Andrew will make the state of Georgia and you proud as he serves on the Georgia Supreme Court just as he already has during his brief time on the Court of Appeals. To our guests here today, I make that statement without reservation because I know that Andrew Pinson has the right intellect, temperament, and philosophy to serve this state as a well-respected justice on the Georgia Supreme Court for many years to come. As for intellect, Judge Pinson has always excelled and risen to the top in each and every stage of his life. At Briarwood Academy in Warrenton, Georgia, Andrew was the star student and a National Merit Scholar. As an undergrad at the greatest university in the world, the University of Georgia, that was for President Moorhead, <laughs> Andrew graduated summa cum laude as a first honor graduate with a degree in finance from the Terry School of Business. At the Lumpkin School of Law at the University of Georgia, Judge Pinson graduated first in his class, and he also served as the executive articles editor and a research assistant to two professors, including Bo Rutledge, the current dean of the law school. After law school, Andrew served as a clerk at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit for then Chief Judge David Sintel. He then clerked for Pinpoint Georgia's own Clarence Thomas on the United States Supreme Court. And for those of you who attended Andrew's investiture last year, you will recall that Justice Thomas stood where I am standing today to he praise and give glowing remarks about his former clerk. After that clerkship, Andrew continued his career in private practice at the prestigious firm of Jones Day here in Atlanta. But then in 2017, we wisely convinced Andrew to join our team at the Department of Law. In 2018, I appointed Andrew to follow in the footsteps of Georgia Supreme Court Justices Peterson and Warren and 11th Circuit Court of Appeals Judge Brent Graham as the Solicitor General for the state of Georgia. And in that role, Andrew excelled as the head of our state's appellate and multi-state litigation practice and served as our chief constitutional officer. So I've personally worked alongside Andrew Pinson 
and I've witnessed firsthand the intellectual firepower that Andrew will now bring to join our state Supreme Court. My experience working with Andrew also makes me very confident that he will bring the exact right temperament to his new distinguished position. He is level-headed. He is a voice of calm and reason in a storm. He never wavers and he never gets flustered. He knows who he is and he knows what he is being called to do. And finally, Andrew has the innate and fundamental understanding of what the role of a Georgia Supreme Court justice is. He knows that it's a judge's job to interpret the law, not to make the law, not to enforce the law, but to interpret the law. In fact, I suspect Andrew would agree with the late U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, who said, if, you are, if you're going to be a good and faithful judge, you have to resign yourself to the fact that you're not always going to like the conclusions you reach. If you like them all the time, you're probably doing something wrong. And I would be remiss if I did not also mention that Andrew Pinson married way over his head. <laughs> his wife, Sarah Beth, is also a Georgia dog who helps Andrew raise their three dogs. And she also trains dogs professionally, which means she, they are what we call in the Bulldog Nation, two damn good dogs. <laughs> Congratulations, Justice Benson. On behalf of the Department of Law and speaking for all in our state, we wish you nothing but the best as you embark on your no new role on the Georgia Supreme Court. I state your name. I, Andrew Allen Pinson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I have been a resident of the state of Georgia. That I have been a resident of the state of Georgia. For the time required by law. For the time required by law. That I will administer justice. That I will administer justice. Without respect to person. Without respect to person. And do equal rights to the poor and rich. And do equal rights to the poor and rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me all the duties incumbent on me as a justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia as a justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia according to the best of my ability and understanding according to the best of my ability and understanding and agreeably to the laws and the Constitution of this state and agreeably to the laws and constitution of this state. And the constitution of the United States. And the constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Justice. Thank you. General Carr for your kind words and thank you to all of you for, for being here today on this special occasion both for Judge Land and for me. I have to tell you I am experiencing a little bit of deja vu this afternoon uh, and, and some of you might be too. Um, of course Justices Boggs and, and Peterson were sworn in as Chief and Presiding Justice in a similar ceremony here just two days ago. And it was exactly a year ago today I think that the Governor asked me to serve on the Court of Appeals I was sworn into that court last August in a ceremony much like this one in this same chamber. I think I'm wearing the same suit and tie, actually. Um, the last time I was here, I expressed my gratitude for all the people in my life who raised me, who taught me about life and the law and how to be a decent human being, and who have supported me all of these years. I'm going to do a very lawyery thing here and hereby incorporate those remarks by reference. <laughs> That said, I, I do have to hit the highlights, right? Um, I remain so grateful for my family, for my mom, for my sisters, Lauren and Emily, uh, for my wife, Sarah Beth, uh, for her parents, Kenneth and Paula, and, and for the rest of her family, for, for all of their love and support. 
Uh, I'd like to especially thank uh, my nieces and nephew, uh, Mary Jo, Dottie, and Colin. Um, a couple of them are in vacation Bible school today, but um, to them I'm known as not Andrew, but Nunu. Um, and after I became a judge, they actually made me this plaque, which sitting, fittingly says that I am now Judge Nunu. Um, uh, I'm not sure if they will update it to reflect my new title. If they, if they do, maybe we can save the court some money on a, a nameplate for oral argument. I don't know. I'll have to check with them. Um, I'm still grateful for the support of the law school at the University of Georgia. Uh, former Dean Rebecca White, Dean Bo Rutledge, uh, professors like Dan Coonan and Kristen Turner and so many others who gave me a foundation on which to build a legal career and a judicial philosophy. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, President Jerry Moorhead, who actually was one who persuaded me to go to the University of Georgia's School of Law in the first place so many years ago after undergrad. It does not take all that much persuading to, to keep a kid in Athens for another three years, but um, persuade me he did. I'm still grateful to Judge Sintel and Justice Thomas for the opportunity to, to clerk for them and learn from them, for adding me to their clerk families, which have been a constant source of support. Uh, two of my co-clerks, uh, Brian and Rebecca, uh, flew across the country to be here today, and I'm so glad to count them and so many others as friends. Uh, and I'm still grateful to my former colleagues at Jones Day, uh, some of whom are here today, uh, to A.G. Carr and my colleagues from the Law Department, including Justice Warren, who I'm excited to get the chance to, to work with again and get edited again. Um, they've been wonderful mentors. They remain good friends. But a year has passed, which means that I somehow have to make room in these brief remarks for more gratitude, because there's, there's a new group of people who have become a part of my life. Uh, first and foremost is the Court of Appeals. Um, it's been a true joy serving as a judge on the Court of Appeals over the past year. And that's in no small part because of the people who make up that institution. The court staff from the clerk Steve Castlin and Deputy Clerk Chris Smith, the talented attorneys on central staff, the rest of the administrative staff, they play such a big role in making sure that we as judges can effectively do our job of upholding the rule of law and seeing that justice is done. Um, those kind and talented people welcomed me into the fold, helped my chambers get up and running, and they worked tirelessly to support the work of that court, even and especially in the late hours on distressed days. Uh, thank you, too, to my chamber's staff, my staff attorneys, Catherine Jackson, Elizabeth Stone, Adam McClay, um, and my judicial assistant, uh, Angela Cook, all of whom are here today. Um, they know as well as anyone the work that goes into deciding the high volume of appeals that come through that court and comes through chambers. Um, and doing that while giving every party that comes before the court the care and the thought and the attention that they deserve. Uh, that work just doesn't get done, uh, or at least done with excellence, without their efforts. And I'm, I'm so glad to have their help and support as well. Finally, I can't say enough about my colleagues on the Court of Appeals. Every one of my 14 colleagues is a thoughtful jurist, and I had the chance to see firsthand that they are also just good people. Um, when I first came onto the court, every single one of them got in touch to welcome me and offer their assistance. And then throughout the year, they were always willing to offer advice and support as I got used to the work of judging. That's one great thing about appellate courts. Every judge joins that court with a different set of skills and experiences, but you get to lean on your colleagues to get the job done. And collectively, the Court of Appeals just brings a wealth of wisdom and experience to the table. Um, and so I'm grateful that I've had this opportunity to work with and, and learn from all of you. And here I'll say too, Judge Land, I'm really excited for you that you too now have the chance to work with and join this wonderful institution um, and to work with and learn from these fantastic people. Uh, I think you're in very good hands. Finally, moving beyond the Court of Appeals, I'm thankful for the new friends that I've met across the state this past year. Uh, as holders of statewide judicial office, I, I believe that one of the most important things that we can do as judges is to meet and build relationships with the many members of our bar and the public across the state. Compared to our other branches of government, the judicial branch is unique and I think special in that it really requires a kind of public-private partnership. Boiled down, our job as judges at any level is to decide cases, to resolve disputes between parties. On the civil side, that means that, that we have very little to do unless private parties bring us a case that they need help resolving. And for both civil and criminal cases, the judicial branch just cannot work unless the parties before the court 
represented by counsel, do the hard work of building the record, of presenting the facts, and presenting the law to us. And I think that partnership runs so much more smoothly when we know and trust each other. When we as judges can have faith that counsel will be candid with the court and act in good faith. And when the parties know that the judge will treat each party fairly, put aside personal opinion, and apply the law as it's written. It's one thing to know that attorneys and judges have taken oaths to that effect, but it's another to know that because you know them as people. And for that reason, I am so grateful to all of the people across the state many of whom I'm so glad to see here today, who have not only taken the time to get to know me, but who have gone out of their way over the past year to help me build these kinds of professional and personal relationships um, with the members of our bar um, and with others that are so important to our system of justice. Uh, I hope and plan to continue to build these relationships on my tenure as a justice of our Supreme Court. Speaking of which, to my new colleagues, um, I am honored to have this opportunity now to work with you. Uh, Chief Justice Boggs said Monday that, that he believes that our state's judiciary, from our trial judges to our court of appeals to our Supreme Court, is the best in the country. I agree. Having worked for many years on the other side of the bench, for some time now as a judge whose work you have been grading, I know that you, along with uh, your former colleagues, including your newly former colleague, uh, Chief Justice Namias, have helped set that bar high. Uh, rest assured, I'm ready and eager to continue this court's long tradition of excellence. And finally, Governor Kemp, thank you again, uh, this time for trusting me to serve on our state's highest court. A lot has happened since you swore me into the Court of Appeals almost a year ago, but what I told you and those gathered here on that day has not changed. I remain deeply humbled and honored and excited to serve the people of Georgia by doing my part to uphold the rule of law. And now I'm ready to get to work. Thank you. Congratulations, Justice Pinch. Next, we're going to celebrate and swear in another double dog, Judge Ben Land. During his more than four years as a Superior Court judge in Columbus, he has upheld the highest standards of profession and served as a great example to others in the field of law and what it brings means to bring integrity, a strong work ethic, and solid judgment to the bench. With a heart for service, he was honored by his fellow attorneys with the State Bar of Georgia's William Spann Award for pro bono advocacy for his efforts on behalf of a client whose case he successfully handled all the way to the Georgia Supreme Court, which is certainly no easy feat, especially when you're trying to keep up with the firm's billable hours. But also what separates Ben from his peers is his dedication to his community beyond the courtroom. He has served in leadership positions with multiple prominent volunteer organizations, and he's even helped instill the values of good character in the next generation of leaders as a youth sports coach. That enduring commitment to public service is obviously a family trait because his brother, judge for the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Georgia and former state senator and Columbus City Councilman Clay Land, has also distinguished himself throughout a career of serving others. Some may argue that Ben is more distinguished because he hasn't served in the General Assembly. <laughs> However, we're lucky enough to have Judge Clay Land with us today, whom I'll ask to come forward and give a formal introduction of his younger brother. Judge Land. Thank you, Governor Kemp. Governor Kemp, members of the Georgia Supreme Court and the Georgia Court of Appeals, other elected officials, friends, family, and especially neighbors from Columbus, Georgia, we appreciate you all being here for this very special occasion. It's been suggested that my remarks should not exceed five minutes. Well, I'll make a good faith effort on that. But my observations are going to be so flattering 
and so complimentary that Brother Ben is not going to want me to stop. <laughs> so I am certain that he will let me borrow a few of his minutes if that becomes necessary. It is truly an honor to be here this afternoon. And while we are cautioned to beware of pride, there are some special occasions where we must throw caution to the wind. Today is one of those times, and I do not hesitate to express my pride in my little brother's impressive accomplishments. Ben is one of four siblings. My sister Linda, who is here today, is also a lawyer. After a few years in private practice and then working as an in-house counsel for AFLAC, she decided to become an entrepreneur, a small business person operating a gift shop in her husband's pharmacy. My other brother, Jay, has a PhD in electrical engineering and works in Huntsville testing and doing research science with regard to laser-guided missile systems for the United States military. I truly have a brother that is a rocket scientist. That's impressive. Now our father, who is unable to be with us today, he's obviously proud of his four children that he helped produce and that he helped educate financially. But he has commented, maybe lamented, on more than one occasion that after all of that education, all of that hard work, all of those outstanding grades, he's produced three out of four children who are on the government dole. <laughs> ben is the youngest and I'm the oldest. Seven years separate the two of us. By the time Ben reached the age where opportunities for serious mischief presented themselves, I was off at college and on to law school. So I don't have any personal direct knowledge of any embarrassing episodes. And since we all know that hearsay is unreliable, I will not repeat the stories that I've heard. Ben has been impressing us most of his life. Growing up, he always excelled. That continued through college and through law school, then as a lawyer and a superior court judge. But what I would like everyone to know, which I think you already know, is that he is uniquely qualified for the position about, upon which he begins service today. I'd like to briefly share with you some observations about Ben in the context of what I believe are the natural or the necessary attributes of a judge. Having been a lawyer for 37 years, the last 20 of which have been as the federal judge in Columbus, I believe I'm qualified on this subject. First, a judge should be studious, able to research the applicable legal principles, discern how they apply, and interpret those principles under the circumstances of a particular case. Ben's rec record demonstrates exceptional studiousness. He graduated from undergraduate school at the University of Georgia with straight A's. I think he was one of those first honor graduates like Justice Pinson, unlike his brother, but um, in any event. He also graduated from law school, not number one in his class, but number two in his class. And had it, that professor not gotten the grade wrong that final semester and given him an A instead of an A minus, I think he would have been first. In fact, I think he appealed that grade. But he did finish second in his class at the University of Georgia Law School. So his scholarship is really irrefutable. A good judge also needs to be an outstanding lawyer. Good judges are not politicians. They're not legislators. 
Their only job is to interpret the law and apply it to the cases before them. With Ben, Governor, you have chosen a real lawyer to be a judge. He spent over 25 years actually practicing law, researching the law, applying the law, communicating complex legal principles in an effective manner, representing clients of every stripe. His broad experience as an active lawyer not only will help him empathize with other lawyers, but has trained him to do the lawyer work that is required of any good judge. Third, understanding human nature. Ben's broad interests, from his love of nature to his involvement in charitable and pro bono activities, and his respect for people from all walks of life, has given him a unique understanding of human nature. Judges see people in some of their most difficult predicaments. We encounter people when anxiety is at an all-time high. We make decisions that can change the lives of those who are not only the parties in the actions before us, but can also have a dramatic impact on others. A good judge must have an understanding and appreciation of human nature. He's not a computer that simply finds the law and recites it. He must apply to actual cases that involve real people and having an understanding of human nature is necessary to do so fairly and justly. Ben's experience as a trial lawyer who represented clients in their darkest and most anxious hour and who could effectively communicate their stories to a jury with a genuine sincerity has provided him with the elusive quality of understanding the human condition. And for the last few years as a trial judge, Ben, that opportunity has provided him with the unique perspective of judging down in the trenches, excuse me for mixing my metaphors, where the rubber truly meets the road. Ben has that perspective. Finally, a good judge must have the character to make decisions based on the law without fear or favor. He must have the courage to make the tough call. And he must be willing to rule without regard to how it may affect the perception of him by others. Ben has this toughness and character. In conclusion, Ben possesses all of the necessary qualities for continuing his service as an outstanding judge. Governor Kemp, your recognition of this validates your good judgment. You have chosen someone who will represent an important part of your impressive legacy. It is my distinct honor to present our next judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals, Benjamin Arthur Lamb, my little brother. after me. I state your name. I, Benjamin A. Land. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I have been a resident of the state of Georgia. That I have been a resident of the state of Georgia. For the time required by law. For the time required by law. That I will administer justice. That I will administer justice. Without respect to person. 
without respect to person. And do equal rights to the poor and rich. And do equal rights to the poor and the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent on me. All the duties incumbent on me. As a judge of the Court of Appeals of the State of Georgia. As a judge of the Court of Appeals of the State of Georgia. According to the best of my ability and understanding. According to the best of my ability and understanding. And agreeably to the laws and constitution of this state. And agreeably to the laws and constitution of this state. And the constitution of the United and States. And the constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank judge. you. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who has come here today to be part of this occasion. Thank you to all of my friends from Columbus who have come and who have filled this chamber. Thank you to all of my friends from parts other than Columbus who have come here to support us today. Congratulations to Justice Pinson on your honor of being now appointed to the Supreme Court of Georgia. Congratulations. It's an honor to follow you in service on the Court of Appeals of Georgia. I would like to thank Governor Kemp for this opportunity to serve all of Georgia on the Georgia Court of Appeals. I am a native and lifelong Georgian, and I am a lawyer and judge of 30 years. I love the state of Georgia, and I love the law, and I'm ready to get to work as the next judge of the Georgia Court of Appeals. I'd like to thank my brother for that kind introduction. When you ask your brother to introduce it, you and you give him no parameters whatsoever. You don't talk to him about what to say, you're taking a bit of a risk. But I think he did a good job, thank you for that. I need to take him on the road with me as I approach an election in 2024. And some of you who had that on video, make sure you send me that video, I, I need it. I, as I look around this room and as I greeted people this afternoon before I walked in here and I saw all of you here. I was overcome with gratitude and heartfelt emotion. I see people in this room that I have been friends with since I was five years old. I see people in this room who I went to elementary school with, middle school with, high school, college, law school. I see people in this room that I practice law with, that I practice law against. I see judges in this room that I had the distinct honor of practicing in front of as a lawyer. I see judges in this room that I had the honor of practicing and, and presiding with as a fellow judge of the Superior Court. And I see our Supreme Court justices present and past. I see our Court of Appeals judges and my life is flashing in front of my eyes. I am honored by your presence. I am honored by my relationship with each and every one of you, and I'm honored by my personal and professional friendship that I have with each of you. To my brother Clay and our former law partner Jerry Buchanan, who is out here in the audience somewhere, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to work as a lawyer at the age of 24 out of the University of Georgia. I want to thank you for convincing me to come home to Columbus to practice law in a firm where I got to hit the ground running. Uh, for those of you who do not know that story, I had an opportunity to come to Atlanta and work in a large firm with what was a very favorable paycheck at the time, and I had another opportunity to go home and work for two guys who had just left their established law practice and started a brand new firm. When they did that, they had no clients. Um, we had no real plan other than we were going to work hard as lawyers and we were gonna represent real people with real problems. I chose to do that, and when I chose to do that, it set the trajectory of my legal career. I got to try cases, I got to meet with and handle real people's problems, and I got to do everything that I thought lawyers need to do. I did that for 25 and a half years and answered the call to service for the Superior Court bench 
back in 2018 in order to serve the public in a different way. And now I have the opportunity to serve the entire state in this legal system, and I am privileged to do so. To those lawyers in the room that I've litigated with and I've litigated against, your presence means a lot to me today. To those lawyers in the room who've appeared in front of me as a judge, your presence means a lot to me today. To those lawyers in the room who've never practiced with me or against me or appeared in front of me, your presence means a lot. I've said it before, I like lawyers. I'm one of those guys who likes lawyers. You are the champions of justice. You are the warriors for justice. And when you do it professionally and you do it civilly, justice prevails and the public benefits. I appreciate the lawyers that are in the trenches every day, toiling for the cause of justice. To those trial judges who are in this room, and I see quite a few. I see a lot of my judge friends from Columbus have made the trip. I see judges from South Georgia. I see judges from North Georgia. I see judges from right here in the city of Atlanta. You have my respect. You have my appreciation for the hard work that you do. It has been the honor of my lifetime to work alongside you as a Superior Court judge doing the hard work that trial judges do. That experience I've had as a trial judge will go with me across the street to the Nathandale Judicial Center. I know what it is like to sit in the seat of the trial judge. I know what it's like to try cases as a lawyer. I know what it's like to try cases and preside over cases as a judge. I know what judicial discretion means. I know it can be abused, but I know what it means. And I know that we give discretion to trial judges for a reason. I know there's no such thing as a perfect trial, but there is such a thing as a fair trial conducted in accordance with the law. And I appreciate the hard work that our trial judges do. To the court staff members, many of whom are here, we have secretaries, we have clerks, we have sheriff's deputies from Columbus, the people who make our system work. You have my respect and appreciation. Thank you for making the trip here today. Thank you for doing what you do. To our sheriffs who are here, thank you for what you do. To our public servants who've answered the call of service, our state representatives and senators and others, thank you for the sacrifices that you make for the state of Georgia and the betterment of this state. You do not get enough acclaim for the tough jobs that you do. To the Court of Appeals judges that I'm about to join, thank you so much for your warm, warm and kind welcome. Thank you for what you do for our state. And thank you for letting me join you on the Court of Appeals with kindness and with mutual respect. You've been nothing but kind and welcoming to me, and I look forward to our relationship as it continues to unfold. To the members of our Supreme Court, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your service to the state of Georgia. And when you have to reverse this, thank you for being kind. <laughs> to my family who is present, you're the reason that I do what I do. To my wife, Jill, thank you for everything that you have done with me and for me for the last 30 years of marriage and 36 years, I think, together. And she was of age when I met her. <laughs> uh, to my kids, thank you for being who you are. Always follow your dreams, always follow your passion, and be yourselves. Be true to yourselves and follow your dreams wherever they lead you. I have two folks that I want to mention who are unable to be here today, uh, who have played obviously a major, major impact on my life. My mother, Mary Kay Clements, is no longer with us. She's been gone, believe it or not, for 21 years. She left us way too soon but there's nobody in my life who has had quite the impact that my mother had. My father, who is 86 years old and not feeling his best today, is unable to be here, but I tip my cap to him. 
he still goes to work at least six days a week at 86 years old. From my mother, I learned the basics of the golden rule. From my father, I learned a work ethic that, in, at least in his case, knows no bounds. And I've carried that with me through my entire life, and I will carry it with me into the day that I'm gone. There are many others that have played a role in my life that have had an impact on my life. Uh, two that I will mention before I quit talking and let you get on with your day are Pete Robinson and Hugh McNabb. Pete Robinson was a great friend and he played a great role in encouraging me and in inspiring me and helping me get the job of judge four and a half years ago. And I owe a debt of gratitude to him. Another fine, fine Georgian who left us way too early. I know his son Miller is with us today. Miller, you had a great dad who meant the world to virtually everybody in this room and many more outside this room. Hugh McNatt also encouraged me, inspired me, and pushed me to apply for the Court of Appeals job. He felt like we needed judges who tried civil cases and the only way that Hugh McNatt knows how to communicate. Ben, we need them in there. We need trial lawyers in there. You need to do this. He encouraged me. He inspired me. And I am thinking of Hugh today. The bottom line as I recite all of these people and groups of people who've had an impact on me, the bottom line is the inevitable truth that we do not arrive at our station in life alone, purely of our own merit. I worked hard to get here, but I didn't do it by myself. I had opportunities and I had people who helped inspire me, who helped encourage me, and helped open doors for me. And without those people, I wouldn't be here today. None of us have gotten here solely on our own merit. And I recognize that, I embrace that, and I will not let those opportunities I've had go to waste. I pledge to you today that I will abide by the oath that I just took with absolute integrity. I seek to bring honor to the Court of Appeals, not any personal glory or claim to myself, by faithfully finding the law and applying it to each and every case that comes before me without fear or favor. My job as a judge for the last four and a half years and my job now as a Court of Appeals job is to impartially decide all cases and show the independence and the courage that the job demands. To my, to my new colleagues on the Court of Appeals, I offer you my loyalty, my friendship, and mutual respect. To the lawyers and litigants who appear before me, I offer you a fair and level playing field for you and all of your clients. I offer you professional and civil treatment of you at every turn. To the public that we all serve, I offer an unwavering devotion to the law. I seek to have the courage to do the right thing when the whole world is watching and the integrity to do the right thing when no one is watching. When my time on this court is done, it is my goal that people say about me, he served with honor, he served in, with integrity, he did the best he could, and he upheld his oath at every turn. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Governor Kemp. Congratulations, Judge Lynch. We've got your little gavel here to mark this momentous occasion, and we wish you all the best and Godspeed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Justice Pinson, if you'll come up, we've got a little, got another, uh, your second gavel, and 
less than a year. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right, we're almost done here. We've got just a little bit of work left to do. But first, I just want to congratulate uh, both of these fine lawyers and, and now Supreme Court Justice and Judge of Court of Appeals for their work and just for their commitment to the law and, and to their state. And we're going to get a few pictures here when we get finished. But today we have many accomplished officers of the court here this afternoon. Some of them have had distinguished themselves wearing the robes of judge, other as able lawyers presenting a case before the court, all of them capable and notable in their own rights. But they have something else in common other than their dedication to the law. All of them in some way or another have been impacted by another special person who is in this room. This individual has spent a full career serving others. In fact, she recently celebrated her 25th anniversary in state government. 17 of those years in the governor's office. She has served in my office as she has in other roles that she's had with diligence, enduring professionalism, exceptional humility, and a calming, quiet presence that causes everyone to love her. Over the span of three administrations and almost two decades, she has been involved in the appointment of numerous judges on both the lo local and state level. In fact, Andrew Pinson is the 331st, and Ben Land is the 332nd judicial appointment. She has had a direct hand in during her time in the governor's office. In that time, she's also served as the right hand of the 10 of 10 different executive councils who have been in the governor's office since she started working there. And never once in all that time of dealing with those folks did she ever lose her cool. And for those of you that know or have served with these folks, that is remarkable. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure they will tell you she was one of the best parts of the job. As my own executive counsel, David Dove, once said about it, Rhonda embodies the institution of the governor's office more than anyone here. She is the living archive of how the office works. She's a beloved fixture in the office that has helped a generation of executive councils thrive. And above all of this, she is a loving wife, a proud mother, and a valued friend. And by the way, today happens to be her birthday. So happy birthday, Ms. Rhonda Wilson. I hope you'll please come up and let us honor, honor you for your service to our great state. Thanks for you, Rhonda. We got your 25 years of faithful service, and we're looking forward to another 25. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we also have a proclamation proclaiming today as Rhonda Wilson Day in the state of Georgia. So thank you for your service. again for being here today. What a great day. We wish these two gentlemen well and we're honored by your presence and today we're going to take a few photos but that concludes our, our formal program. So have a great day. Safe travels. Godspeed.